Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is actually a knitting video. <laughs> the Crochet Crowd teaches knitting. So I'm a very basic knitter. I've never claimed that I'm a good knitter or that I'm an experienced knitter but I'm a basic one. So this checks my box for being basic and I sat with a friend yesterday to show me how to do this. So what we're looking at these beautiful stitches here. This is the Bernat uh, Symphony. This is called the Pillar Stitch right here. This is the garter stitch that just regular stitching back and forth and so you're just gonna do back and forth on the edges because that prevents an afghan or a blanket uh, from rolling. So we're going to go through this particular process in order to do it. I am going to use the basic yarn of uh, Bernat Homemaker or Bernat Maker Home Deck and I'm gonna use that yarn so it doesn't change color so it's probably easier because if you're absolutely new to knit knitting and you're maybe not familiar with knitting like I am um, then maybe a solid yarn would be better for you to learn. So um, this has actually been uh, done in a Bernat Symphony as I said. So Bernat Freesia and also Bernat um, Velvet Yarn. So without further ado we're gonna go through the basics of this. Um, there is a tutorial on how to change yarn. So you'll notice that the sample actually is, has the colors broken up. Um, you can decide to do that or you can just use an example like this of the Bernat Symphony where just let the yarn go through and there are tutorials on how to change your yarn. So if you run out of a uh, yarn midway through you can actually deal with that. Also if you're gonna change it on the end you can deal with that as well. So I will link those into this particular article on the crochetcrowd.com so you have the, that information and it's a separate tutorial for that. So let's uh, go through the tools. So here are the tools of choice. This is called the circular knitting needles and uh, what they are is that you're looking for one that has a 29 inch wire here to be able to do. This one is not 29 inches just so you know. Um, it's just I'm doing a small swatch with you here. So this allows you to be able to knit and then it slides down and then you just flip it over and then you just knit to the other side. So the, the blanket is being held on top of this wire. So because the blanket is 50 inches long you can't have two sticks and actually be able to hold those onto the sticks without a problem because it's not possible. So you'll want to use these uh, little knitting needles. You're looking for a six and a half millimeter, a US ten and a half in order to make this work and as I mentioned uh, Bernat Symphony is a really beautiful yarn choice and you can do the Freesia or the Velvet too. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start up and let's talk about the multiples next. The multiples in this blanket are three. So you can go three, six, nine as long as you have a multiple of three at the end. So when we go to put on 150 of these stitches onto your knitting needles you'll know that's a multiple of three. So if you'd like to change the size of this. Now if you're gonna say Mikey you know how many uh, stitches do I need for a certain size? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm a crochet Ronnie. So um, my point being is that if you wanna change the size it's in multiples of three. So what I do know from knitting is that when I have the yarn ball I want it sitting on the same side of my hand that's feeding the yarn to the needle. So in this case I'm right handed naturally so my ball is just over here off camera. So if you're left handed it will be on the opposite side of this and the video will show you as being that. So what we want to do is we want to create a slip knot to begin. Create an extra long tail so that you can use that to sew it in later as with the tapestry needle and create a slip knot. And you wanna slip it onto your, one of the needles you have a 50-50 shot. <laughs> so we're gonna just put it on there and let's just tighten it up onto that needle. Here and let's grab the other side. I know this is like watching a dog <laughs> on its hind legs. So what I want to do is that I wanna ignore the tail and I just wanna concentrate on the yarn going to the ball. So I'm just gonna tighten things back up. So we're gonna do a simple cast on. You wanna do 150 of these things. <laughs> so you're just gonna stick in your needle. Let me just get you a little closer. So now that the slip knot is on you're just going to slip into that knot. So if you look at it from a down position like this and you wanna push up. So this needle here is in behind. You're then going to grab this yarn strand leading to the ball and wrap it around the back. Okay, so it's just dangling behind so just wrap it around the back and apparently I'm a loose knitter. <laughs> we won't even get into that folks. So we're going to just uh, just pull and you want to get this needle to pick up that piece there and bring it to the underside. So just flick it underneath right here and push up. Okay, I'll show you again. So you're gonna stick in and you're gonna have this needle on the back side. 
wrap it. Isn't that fun? Don't you love this hobby already? <laughs> so you're gonna wrap it from behind and you're gonna pull through. Okay? So now when you put this on to this because this is considered one stitch, this is another. When you do it you want to get this one so that it picks up from the underside. Okay, so don't slip it on like this. This is what I did for years and it turns out that's why it was always wrong. So I learned this yesterday. So I want to just flip up and put it onto the needle. Isn't that like magic? I know. So let's do it again. So you're just gonna go to the next one you just put on. So come in from the underside, wrap it and flick. I don't even know if there's a technical word for that. Okay, and then you're just going to pick that up. So noticing how I'm picking it up. It matters. Okay, so you're going to go to the next one. So I'm gonna do a small swatch with you on camera but you can do 150 of these things if you'd like to. And I know, are we having fun yet? <laughs> oh. Oh God, this tutorial is gonna be fun. So I, I don't mind knitting. Um, to be honest with you, I'm just not good at it. Um, I, I like crochet because it's faster. But knitting has its purpose and knitting looks good in clothes. I, th I find more than anything. Depending on the project of course. So I'm just like uh, casting on. So this is called casting on. Did I not say that yet? <laughs> Okay, so I wanna do a multiple, I'm gonna do 21 because that's a multiple of three and it will allow me to demonstrate this project easier. So we're just gonna keep casting on and once you understand this, I'm gonna also hold the yarn differently once I get moving on this thing but when I cast on I hold it this way. I have no idea if it's wrong or not but that's okay. We're gonna fake it or make it today. So keep on casting on, get to 150 if you wish and, or a multiple of three and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, so I have my multiple of three. There's only 21 on here. It will get wider. It'll feel like it's tight because it is but it will loosen off. So what I wanna do is some magic with my fingers. So I'm gonna take this pinky, okay, and I'm gonna wrap it around the yarn like this. I'll demonstrate this a couple times I think. And then I go over, under, over. Okay, you ready for that again? So take your pinky and just pick it and rotate it and then go over, under, over. I'll demonstrate one more time because that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna wrap it and go over, under, over. And then I'm going to reach down and grab this one here. So what this is doing is it's controlling the tension a lot easier and you'll see it in just a moment. So what I want to do is two inches of the garter stitch. So let me just back you out here and let's just start or sorry let me back you in or let me put you in. So let me zoom in and show you what to do. Okay so you want to start and you wanna go into the first stitch and put the needle to the back side of the stitch. And because of the way that it's on my hand I'm just gonna woof around the top. This is called uh, throwing and I'm just going to pick it and then I'm gonna slide the existing one off and now it's on this needle. So then I'm gonna slide into the next one and whoo around. It's gonna be interesting how my CC team does this video <laughs> and we're gonna whoo around. This is called throwing and we're just gonna go all the way down and throw and slide off. Woo. So I wonder how many people at home are gonna make those sounds. Woo. Um, when it comes to any kind of teaching I always come up with memory hooks and ideas in my head to make it easier for me to remember. So that's kind of one of those things. Woo. Okay so you're just gonna go all the way down just doing the same motion and I will see you at the end of your line in just a moment. So eventually you'll come out to the very last one and you'll just slide up and whoosh around and slide it and then release this one. So when you're going to restart the next row just switch your needles in your hand. 
you can keep it locked into your hands as far as like the, the yarn wrapping. And then you immediately start again and you wanna do two inches of this stitch all the way across. So starting in the next one, the needle to the back side and whoosh around and you'll notice that it's much looser now, now that we've gotten beyond the cast on. So you're just gonna blaze your way across. Now I was practicing like for three hours yesterday on this so um, if you would've saw me at lunchtime yesterday we were like okay how do I use these things again? <laughs> so I said to my friend I said well thank God there's no purling and she goes sweetie that's the next row and I'm like oh my God. <laughs> so just uh, go all the way down this is called the garter stitch and I will see you at the end of the row and then I'm gonna just tell you to do your two inches and then meet me back here and then we'll get into the really fun stuff and so you'll be sliding slip sliding away. So then you're going to just switch and then begin again. So do about two inches that's what it says to do in the pattern and then we're gonna carry on and we'll start you something new. So just I'm gonna do two inches here just because and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So when I last left you we got this thing a little bit bigger. It's now two inches. I know amazing right? It just took, it just took me seconds honestly. <laughs> no it didn't. So anyway so I've got my two inches here. So now we're gonna do the first row. So this is called the next row in the pattern. So what we have to do is we have to do an increase and then we have to knit knit. So we're gonna knit front back and then knit knit. Mm -hmm. Say that ten times fast. So let's uh, pretend that we know what we're doing. So we're gonna stick our, hook, our our needle into the stitch like you had been and so we're going to knit front back. So you're gonna wrap that hook. So do that sound that I showed you. Whew. Okay so you're gonna wrap around and you're gonna flick it but don't slide it off. So flick it and pull it through. Then you're gonna take that needle and you're going to um, park your car. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna stick it in again. So you're gonna take that needle and you are going to go into the stitch. So just kind of rotate it around so you go in from the other side. Okay so you've got it. So stick it into that same one again. You're, it's a twofer. <laughs> so and then you're going to shoosh around and then you're gonna pick it up and so you just created two stitches and then slide. Isn't that like a miracle? It is the miracle of all miracles. So now we're gonna do knit knit. So the next two are knit. So just, just shoosh and slide off and do the next one and shoosh and slide off. So now we're gonna do the knit front back and then knit knit. So let's show you this again. So you're gonna go in and shoosh and pull it through but don't slide it off and rotate that needle around and go back into that same one again and swoosh and pull through. And I know somebody's gonna make a comment on this video. This is the most annoying video ever. <laughs> I'm glad I can please. So you're gonna slide off. Okay so once you get your knit front back in you're gonna knit knit. Okay so knit knit and I'll demonstrate one more time because it's your lucky day. Okay so you're gonna go in and swoosh and pick but you're not gonna slide it off. You're gonna go for a second one and slide it in again. If it feels tight to you it's tight for me but you know in time it might get loose. I've been told I'm a loose knitter but I don't even know if that's possible. So I'm going to just pick that one up here and now you got the two. So you, you can see that they kind of belong together. So if you're ever getting confused, it's okay. That's the story of my life. Um, they kind of belong together the way they're sitting. So once you have that done just slide off. So I want you to go through your whole uh, row. So um, you're gonna knit knit and then knit front back. So it's that, that twofer and then knit knit and twofer and knit knit. That's not technical language I know but that's okay because it's your lucky day. Okay so I'll see you at the end of this row. So when you come up to the end of the row you're gonna have the last three stitches. So if your stitch count is right the third last one because I've just done my knit front back and then knit knit. So the last three should be balanced. So you you know your counts right. So let's just do your knit uh, front back. So whoosh and pick it up and do it again. And then the last two stitches are knit knit. Okay so if you're still sticking with me we're gonna go on to row number um, we're gonna go on to row number one. Okay and now we're gonna turn our work and begin row number one next. 
Okay, so now let's start the repeat pattern. We're gonna do rows one and two. They're actually really simple rows. They're just a matter of repeating. So row number one, we are just going to keep in mind that the first six are always going to be the same. So they're just gonna be a garter stitch, a regular knit stitch and then the final six are also gonna be the same. That is going to prevent the af or the blanket from rolling. So the first six always will be, no matter what row you're in now at this point, is that you're just going to knit them. So just one, two, three, four, five and six. So now that the first six are in, the remaining all the way until the final six is going to be a purl. So to do the purl, you have to see this yarn strand here. You have to go through the goal post. Okay, so through the needles here and put it on the, the side that's closest to you and then begin. So when you stick it in, this needle here has to land on top of the back one just like that and then you wrap around and then you flick it towards the back and you're gonna purl all the way until the final six. So I got, I got seven there so this is the last one. So now that the last six are here, what you're going to take is that take that yarn strand and put it through the goal post to the back side again and then you're just gonna regularly knit so the needle goes towards the back side of that and you're gonna do the final six like that. And that is completing off row number one. So you'll do that all the way across and then we will turn and then we'll do row number two which is the end of the repeat. So you'll do rows one and two. So meet me back here in just a moment. So row number two is called the pillar stitch that we're about to do. And so what we're going to do then is that the first six as I mentioned to you are automatically gonna be a knit stitch and the final six are gonna be a knit stitch. So you're just going to do the first six. So that's nice and easy for you to remember. So let's do the first six. So one, two, and three, four, five and six. So now we're gonna do the pillar stitch then all the way until we get to the final six here. So to do this is that watch what we're going to do. So it's a, it's a matter of just completing the steps. Take this yarn strand that you have and go through the goal post between. So just coming through and go to the front side. That's considered a yarn over. So leave it right where it is and you're gonna knit the next two. So one and two. So now that those two are done, you're gonna go to the third one back which is the yarn over and you're going to just pull this up over top of your knitting needles like this. And this creates a horizontal line. So release it and then you see there's a horizontal line being left there. So then you're going to begin that again. So through the goal post to the front side, that's considered yarn over and you're gonna knit the next two. So one and two. Then you're going to go to the third one back which is the yarn over and then go up and over like that. You see that? Isn't that neat? Okay, so do you remember what to do? So through the goal post, that's a yarn over and knit and knit and then third one back going up and over. So this is actually technically my second uh, take doing this. I forgot to do the purl and when I forgot to do the purl it was a struggle and I'm like I don't remember that during practice. So through the goal post knit and knit. So obviously the purl row below it makes the world of difference for getting that one to go up and over without struggling. Okay, so you're gonna continue to do that until you can see the final six that are done. So the last one that goes up and over should be the last one uh, before the six starts. So remember yarn over and knit, knit. And then third one back, pick it and flick it over top. And then just push it down a little bit. So do this all the way and I'll see you when the six um, stitches are at the end. So as I'm coming across I just did the flick over and then I have the last six that are here. So you're just gonna just knit the final six of that row. 
So this is the ending of row number two. So it just takes a couple of rows to, in order for you to see what your work really will look like and it's actually really nice and it's just like that sample that I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. So then you're going to finish that and then turn your work and begin row number one again. Do you remember what it was? Just simply knit the first six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then you're going to purl the remaining. So make sure this yarn comes in front of the goal post. So just between them. So it's sitting on the front side before you start and then going in leaving this needle on top and then flick it over and go towards the back. And you'll do those all the way until the final six where you'll just reverse once again and you'll just knit the remaining six. So this is row number one all over again. So I'll keep the camera going. Then once you get to your final six that you see move that between the goal posts to the other side again to the back and then just knit the final six. So I'll show you row number two one more time and then we'll continue on in this tutorial because once you have a, all the length completed then you just gotta do a couple more things before you end up in the end of your blanket. So let's uh, just finish off this row and take a quick break and I'll be right back in just a moment. So let's begin row number two all over again. So the first six get knit. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And then we're gonna start that fun stuff again. So it's the pillar stitch. So between the goal posts bring it to the front side. That's a yarn over and you're gonna knit the next two. So I call it knit knit. Then once you have that second knit done you go to the third one back and you pull it up over top of the other two and just let it sit in front and it goes out as a horizontal bar. Okay and then slide it back down. So to start the next one through the goal post to the front side that's a yarn over and then knit and knit and then pick it up and go over. So I'm gonna quiet and for the remaining of this row until the final six. So I'll just keep on moving in this pattern. The tension matters on this thing so make sure the yarn is coming nicely from the ball. So I did my last pillar stitch in there. You can see the last six are in. So you're just gonna knit the regular six. So let's move on in the pattern and because we did an increase in the beginning with that whole front back knit knit. So what we have to do is we have to do a decrease row in order to get ourselves back to the regular size. Because of the texturing of the stitch um, you need those extra stitches in order to do that in order for this to stay square. So that's kind of what it looks like at this moment. So let's move on now and let's do the next row. So as mentioned in the tutorial I told you that I would put a link in the more information of this video for where this pattern is but also how to change color. So you can see that the afghan actually has a color change when you're using Bernat Frisia Velvet or the Bernat Symphony yarn. So what we have here at this moment is that once you have the amount of inches done and uh, you can decide to go as many inches as you want. It's about 60 inches from the base to where you're ready to go for the next one. So what we need to do is to decrease row because we had to increase in order to make the stitch work happen. So to do that it's really quite easy. So you're going to do a knit two together. So you're gonna stick your, your needle in two loops at the same time. So just coming from there yarning over and picking it through there and that is a two together. So then just slide off. So you do that one plus then the other two. So it's knit two together and then knit knit. Okay so then the next one has to be two together. So you're just gonna put two into the same yarning over pulling it through and then knit knit. So knit the next two as normal. You're gonna do that all the way across in order to bring this back in balance and then we still have some other stuff to do. So then put the next two together. So carry on all the way to the end of the row and I'll see you back here in just a moment because we still have to finish off the other side bordering just like you had done in the very beginning. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm just doing my all the way to the end. My stitch counts are still proper so that I just knit two together and then just knit knit the final two. 
So we still have to do our two inches of our journey at the end of this and now it's just regular stitch work then to get the border to look the same on the other side. So with the outside of it being the knit here and this it looks like it belongs and then the inside here all has that fancy stitch work. So for two inches you want to just do a knit stitch sorry just knit back and forth it's called the garter stitch and you're just gonna go back and forth and you can whistle Dixie and turn on the TV and enjoy. So I'm gonna let you uh, get that done and then I'll show you how to cast off and enjoy your project at the very end of this. Okay so now that you get two inches on the other side so you can see the fun stuff is in the middle it obviously would be a lot bigger than this. So you have your edging right, and, and now let's cast off let's pretend we know what we're doing right at the very end of this. Yep. So we're gonna slide off yes. So slide off that's the first one and you're gonna knit the second one. So if I'm keeping it to what they told me you slide off that first one. So then you knit the second one and you slide that off. You then stick your needle in the first one and then drag it up over top like that and you're casting off. So you're gonna knit the next one. So swoosh around and slide off and then you take the first one on there and go up over the top and we're gonna do that all the way to the end. So go around, swoosh it, slide it off and then take the first one over. So I'll see you at the end of this row and I'll be right back in just a moment. Just one more tip uh, I just on the stitch social and they're telling me I'm getting all these great tips. So uh, they said that if I don't want the pucker so you see how it's kind of puckering on me. <laughs> they said just keep it a little bit looser. So just uh, knit when you cast off just to be a little bit looser and then just flick it on over because if you're too tight you'll get a pucker. I'm sure that's a technical word in knitting somewhere. So if you don't want the pucker just be a little bit loose. Okay I'll see you at the end of the line for, for real this time. So I'm coming all the way to the end and this is the end of the road my friends. So we have that final stitch to work through. So just pull up a little bit of a loop and you're going to grab the strand and you're going to grab a tapestry needle and what we need to do is lock that final into position. So just go through this loop. Just pull on it and that locks it and then just whatever you need to do just take your needle and just go into the stitch work itself and just go back and forth a total of three times and that should lock into position. So I don't normally knit so a little bit of this has been a journey. Um, I've been broadcasting live this whole time in this tutorial. It's been really quite entertaining. <laughs> Uh, the comments that people are making behind the scenes are so encouraging and and I think they like seeing a train wreck go in motion too. <laughs> so this yarn is fabulous. It's just really tight and tight's good today. So once I've gone back and forth a total three times I can just snip it and forget about it. And you wanna do that with all your tails. So I know it's kinda of hard to see but the center here is what the fancy stitch work was. This was the bordering that we had. I learned how to do the edging so the edging looks a little bit different uh, when you do that. But over and all it's actually been fun and considering that I don't knit very often this turned out pretty good and it's so elasticy. I don't even know if that's a real word. So I'll let you go for today. Have a great day and we hope to see you again right here in Yarnspirations on the crochetcrowd.com. Bye bye.